All right, g'day guys, welcome back to True Footy, doing a pretty quick fire video today. Basically, you would have seen on my Instagram story uh, about 24 hours ago, I put out a little message saying, give me some topics for concepts in the AFL that may be underrated or overrated. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through the list of all the suggestions that you guys offered on Instagram and tell you whether, in my opinion, they're underrated, they're overrated, or if I have to sit on the fence and say, it's probably rated about right. Obviously, this is all gonna be pretty subjective. It's just gonna be my opinion. It's also kind of relying on me correctly perceiving how someone is rated. So I might think someone is overrated overrated or underrated, but the reality is I don't actually realize whether people rate them or not. So I'm sure there's gonna be tons of things in this video that you don't quite agree with, but I thought it would be still a quite a lot of fun to uh, have a little crack at this style of video. Before we get into the video, I just wanna thank everyone for all the support lately. Just ticked over 14,000 subscribers uh, on the live stream on Saturday night for a cracking final between Melbourne and Brisbane. Really appreciate all the support lately. I'm really gearing up to maybe try and get the goal of 15,000 by grand final day. I don't think I'll hit it. I'd have to have one of my best months ever, but you know, even if you guys help me get really close, I'd still be really happy with that. And I really do appreciate all the support. I really don't feel like I deserve 14,000 subscribers, but it means the world to me that you guys are sticking around, you know, getting involved in live streams. I had so much fun on the weekend doing uh, two live streams it was, and then did another live stream this morning on Drewsy's channel with the Jake Paul fight. But anyway, I just wanted to show some gratitude. It is the most exciting time of the year from a football sense, and I can't wait to crack into the last month of the season with you guys. As I always say, don't forget to check out the sponsors of the True Footy YouTube channel as well, manscaped.com. We got Father's Day coming up, and I legitimately just bought one of these Manscaped colognes for Father's Day for Dad's gift. He doesn't know that yet, so hopefully he's not watching this. Felt a little inappropriate getting Dad anything related to ball shaving for his Father's Day at 67 years old. I thought that would be a little bit weird, but I do love colognes. I know dad wears them. So if you're interested in checking it out, go to the website manscaped.com and you can get 20% off and free shipping using the code TRUEFOOTY20. All the stuff uh, that you need to know is in the description of this video. Let's crack into it. So it's going to be pretty simple preparation for this video. I'm just going to read off my phone in chronological order, basically um, in terms of the order the comments actually came in. So let's start off with the first comment from Druzy and his topic is the Jersey YouTube channel. So overrated, it's not silly. Nah, but in all seriousness, I actually do think Drews is quite underrated. You'd probably be surprised how dedicated he is and how much work he puts into growing a good channel. Works very hard on the Drew Footy Show and I uh, hope he's not watching this because this is cringy, but I actually do think he is probably a little bit underappreciated. Some of his non-footy content yet also hasn't started quite popping, but he will, he will get there for sure. Next up we have from Ben Ma. He nominates Nick Cox. So Nick Cox is a super athletic 200 plus centimeter wingman from Essendon, of course, um, who enjoyed a really, really good season in his first year. I don't know if I would say overrated or underrated. I think he gets a lot of media attention, but I think it's justified for a guy his size to be playing the positions he does and having the impact that he did in his first season. I think he's about rated. Um, he was probably in the outside mix of that rising star without being, you know, one of the absolute best players. I think he's about rated quite right. Next up, we've got Chris nominating Hayden Young from the Fremantle Dockers. It's a funny one where I think Fremantle fans appreciate Hayden Young and know how good he is. But I would say league-wide, he's a little bit underrated, but that's gonna be common with young players who haven't quite made their mark at AFL level. He's been pretty injury-prone in his time, despite being, you know, he was a top 10 pick, and there's not a lot of awareness of how good he is, but I think he's gonna be an absolute star, one of Fremantle's best future players, so I'm gonna say he's underrated, definitely. To look as composed as he is and play as well as he does after what, just 12 games? Yeah, I think he is going to be a gun. Sam Smart nominates Matthew Rao. So I don't know if I'd say he's overrated, but I did sort of question a little bit the the need to put heaps of pressure on this kid coming back from injury. There was a big expectation, you know, even before he did his injury in round one this year that he was gonna come in and be a Brownlow level player. I didn't think that was realistic or fair. I'm not gonna say he's overrated, but he's closer to being overrated than underrated. Um, I, I, he hasn't played quite well uh, you know, this season coming back from injury, but I would give him that excuse of, you know, having a really interrupted start to his career. So I think he's going to be a future All-Australian midfielder probably on multiple occasions. I would say he's probably slightly overrated, but I do really think he's a gun. Does that make sense? The feat of achieving, you know, as many Brownlow votes as he did in his first four games, you know, that's unprecedented. So he deserves all the hype for that, but the expectation that he's going to, you know, continue on that path uh, straight away was probably, you know, overhyping him a little bit. Sam Smart also nominates Dustin Martin. I don't think he's overrated. If you if you look at his season statistically, you know, he's he's a little bit 
he kind of coasts through the season then lists for the big moments but as far as I'm concerned that's arguably one of the most important traits in a champion player is the ability to lift and the three Norm Smiths really speak to that. I, I'd say he's adequately rated. I'm not going to say Dusty's overrated. Joel Scary says the True Footy channel is underrated. Oh thanks mate. Nah, definitely overrated. Sam Power nominates Marcus Bontempelli. I'm going to go boring and say I think he's rated about right. I think he's pretty much the best player in the comp. You know, Clayton Oliver, Christian Petrarca, these guys, uh, even Dusty really, have really challenged that. Uh, mostly Oliver and, and Petrarca this year. I just think despite, you know, he's in a downturn of form a little bit, Bont, um, I, I would, he'd be the one player I'd take in the competition. So I'd say he's about rated because I think he does get a lot of that respect. Mikey EJC says, Mark Williams' role at Melbourne. Honestly, I have no idea. I have no idea. Success really follows Mark Williams. He seems to be a very good and respected coach and he's talked up within the ranks. So I guess maybe underrated because it's not a big sort of story that we hear a lot about, um, but I am really not in a position to, to make that call. So maybe err on the side of underrated. Chris chimes in once again uh, and he says, trading a top five pick for multiple first and second round picks. I mean, this is hard because this is not too specific. So multiple, does that mean two or three? Uh, but I understand what you mean, trading down out of, a, if you say you've got a top five pick, trading that so you can have multiple bites at the apple. I think this is too contextual. I think it really depends on both the draft and your list needs. If you're a side that has gone a long time without a top five pick and, the, and you know, the draft talent you know, drops off after the last to, uh, to, top five, which I think, you know, there's been drafts like that. Uh, that's where I'd favor the top five pick. But generally speaking, I think maybe uh, fans could maybe be more appreciative of the idea that, you know, sometimes more bites of the apple inside the top 20, say if you get three picks in the late teens versus a top five pick, historically speaking, you're probably going to do better with those late picks. So uh, I understand where you're going there, Chris, but I can't really rate that because not specific enough. We've got a triple nomination here from Sam Smart, Yash Fratel, and BW2007 who all want to know my thoughts on Toby Green. Is he overrated or underrated? BW2007 says he is underrated. I don't think he's underrated. I think the hype at the moment is, you know, people are talking about him as a top five player in the comp. It's hard because the stats won't reflect that. And I feel like every time Green sort of really gets going, he gets injured or you know, drops off a little bit. I don't think he has a consistency to be, say, you know, a real genuine top five player, but if I'm an opposition coach looking at the Giants week in, week out, he's probably the number one man I don't want to get into form. Uh, as we saw in the elimination final, he was fantastic and arguably the difference between the two sides. So uh, I think he's rated correctly. I think he's rated correctly. Sam Smart uh, nominates Nick Natanui. I've actually done a video on this exact topic. I don't think he's overrated. In fact, I think he's closer to be underrated because of the year he's had this year and the last two years. He had a long period of time where he was overhyped. Uh, people sort of really um, hyping up his impact, which I, I think is there, but his highlight reel and stuff like that. And that caused a lot of people to sort of get frustrated with the idea that, you know, people talk about Nick Nat as one of the best rucks in the game when perhaps there were years there where he genuinely wasn't. But at the moment, you just watch the year that he's had. Um, he's been ultra consistent, probably the Eagles MVP. Um, he's been unreal. To be honest, I think he's rated about right, but um, I don't think he's overrated. If anything, he's probably underrated by some who still sort of go off the old narrative that he doesn't impact as much as the, uh, his hit out suggests. But anyway, I won't go down that tangent too much. Heath Sheehan has bobbed up and says, football is overrated this weekend. <laughs> My boy Heath has uh, had his beloved Swans knocked out this round, but uh, it was a great game of footy, so can't agree with you there, mate. Geordie Katsos, Katsos and Big James Cousins do, uh, double up and say Dylan Moore from the Hawks. I think probably a little underrated, but again, I'm going to refer to when young players really take that first step. It's always the, the fans of that team notice first, and then they start to get the respect after that. So I'd probably agree, slightly underrated. Samuel Wilmot nominates the Brownlow Medal. That's a good one. I do think this is an overrated award. Um, it's... It's probably a little bit flawed having the umpires pick the votes every game uh, because, you know, they, they've got a very narrow perspective of a game and that's why it's a midfielder's award. Um, and also they're not really meant to consult stats, but how many times have you sort of been a spectator at a game and not noticed the impact someone's had? Uh, but then you look at the stat sheet and go, oh, wow, he's had 15 clearances. Did not notice him that much. So I agree that it's flawed and I probably prefer the coach's award um, in terms of, the right players getting rewarded with votes. Daniel Saunders says, Tom McCartan from the Sydney Swans, probably one that I may be a little underrated. I'll admit that. I didn't have him in my 22 under 22 originally, and then he actually made the team. So by that logic, 
underrated by me, but the fact that he made that team shows he's probably rated about right. Sam Schonfelder says Essendon season in 2021. Hmm, this might come across the wrong way, but maybe a little overrated. And the reason it is because I think they were never in as bad a shape going into this year as uh, a lot of people sort of, you know, that, that narrative was pushed and that, you know, SM were going to drop off. I had them, uh, to be fair, I did actually have them 13th. I said they would push for finals the entire year and drop away. And to be honest, that might have happened if we had more competition for that 7th and 8th spot. I think it was a great year for them. Is it overrated? Only because I think they should have always been aiming for about 8th. So, yeah, it sounds harsh. I think they had a great season. Caleb, three votes. Meat pies at the footy. You know what? I've been a member for three years. Haven't once had a meat pie at Optus Stadium, so I'm going to say overrated. Dan Quinn says Ben Rutten. Hard to say. First year in a role um, at the SNM Footy Club with a team that was been rebuilding for a number of years now. Uh, I have no strong opinion on Ben Rutten. I think the proof will be in the pudding over the next few years and how they transition past this period because Essendon have a habit of making finals and then dropping out. So. Uh, too early to call. Sorry, that's a bit of a cop-out. Jordan Johnson says, Bontempelli again, but this time adds that Libba is better than him. I'm going to disagree with you, Jordan. Uh, he's a great player, Libba, but I think Bont uh, has that champion game-breaking ability that yeah, other players just do not have. Harvey Burke says, Cripps' 2021 season overrated or underrated. So I had a little bit of a look at stats before I started recording this, uh, and his stats are well down on his best years. So you have to say, not underrated but he probably has copped a lot of heat, um, largely because of team success not really translating and he's usually the engineer behind his team winning games. So I'm gonna say rated about right, but probably harshly treated in the media because he's probably injured. That's my that's my belief. I think he's gotta be injured. Ashton Hurd says Luke Shu is overrated. I'm gonna disagree with you there because Luke Shu is my favorite player. Uh, but also I don't think Luke Shu is really is he really considered one of the absolute best mids in the game? I don't think so. He's he's taken two years where he's barely got on the park and um, hasn't really been given an opportunity. The thing about, I like about Shui is his stats might not always show how good he is because it's his attacking nature and his ability to hit up targets in a very aggressive manner that sets him apart from all the other Eagles mids. So I don't think he's overrated. I don't think he's underrated and I still think he's got plenty of football left in him. Lockie Cass says Jordan Dugowie has gone from overrated to underrated. Probably. Probably. I, I still think he's rated about right. I, I don't think he was ever... Okay, maybe he was a bit overrated with some of the contract talks uh, before he'd achieved too much and his move to the midfield has proven a success this year. I think he's rated about right. I think everyone appreciates that uh, he can turn a game off his own boot. Tom Hooper nominates Darcy Parrish. Uh, I don't think he's underrated or overrated. He uh, was fantastic this year. I think he got an All-Australian bench spot, which is about right. And I think the hype is there is justified because of where he came from this year. So I think that's about right. Oliver Mir says Liam Ryan is overrated, having not reached 30 goals this season. I agree that it wasn't a great backup season from his All-Australian year last year, but I think he's still one of the more damaging Eagles players when he gets the ball. So. Players are allowed to have off seasons and their form dip, and it doesn't necessarily mean they're overrated. So I will say he's rated about right. Mitch Buttsworth points out Jake Stringer proved his doubt is wrong this year. I think that's fair. I would have probably leaned toward Jake Stringer being overrated for what he's actually achieved going into this year, but he's put in together a fantastic player, ranked the best player statistically in the second half of the year. So uh, yeah, I agree. I don't know if he's underrated anymore. I think he's a really good player though. Tom Hooper has says Tom Mitchell has become underrated. I would probably agree with that. He's been overlooked a little bit this year. Looking at it statistically, he's had uh, almost as many disposals as, per game as his Brownlow year, uh, but you know, far, far less clearances. And I think we're just not noticing him as much because the end product around him, the ball, the players he's giving the ball to aren't really making the most of that end product. So. Maybe a little bit underrated. It'll be interesting to see how well he polls this year considering how many games he was dominant. Declan Keedy says Carlton is an overrated team. Yeah, it's an interesting one. Some people think that maybe the expectations on them pushing for finals this year and sacking Teague is probably unfair because of where their list is at. And I think it's that's probably a fair comment given they are a young side. I think I saw a stat earlier in the year that they had about eight players on their list in their prime. That's an underrated thing to, to look at when you look at some of those other finals contenders, you know, GDO West and West Coast come to mind, how many of their players are in their physical prime. Uh, you can understand why Carlton finished below both of them. That being said, both of those teams are underachieved this year. Noah says Jarman Impey. Um, 
maybe slightly underrated. I think Hawthorne fans really like him. Doesn't really get talked about that much, but he is a good little player. Jack Blishk, hope I'm saying that correctly. Seth Tuke Miller. Uh, no, I think he's correctly rated because he won an All-Australian bench spot this year, and I think that's about right. Just in that group of mids, just outside your Petrakas and Olivers and... Yeah, he's had a fantastic year, and I think he's been rewarded for that. Os Reedy says, Ross Lyon is overrated by himself. <laughs> Ross Lyon is not the most friendly, warm, or likable person. Uh, at least that's the way he fronts the media. But I don't know if I've seen any evidence that he really rates himself. His record, despite, you know, Fremantle rebuilding in the last three years of that time he was there, or four years or whatever it was, uh, his win-loss ratio was still incredible. Yes, he did inherit some of those well, both of the sides in St. Kilda and uh, and Fremantle when they were about to take that next step. But uh, no, I think he's I think he's proven himself. And he didn't win a flag, but neither of those clubs have a history of winning flags, really. So Dakota Carter says Luke Parker. Uh, yeah, well, I looked up the, the stats statistically. He's having almost his best season. Certainly, I think the most disposals per game uh, and right up there with clearances. And uh, yeah, I think, I think he's a respected player in the league, but maybe had an underrated year in terms of how much he's actually helped Sydney perform well this year. Dakota Carter also says Baz Lenka, maybe a little overrated, uh, but not overly overrated. I think he's probably one of those players that's a bit overhyped because of his image. Uh, you know, he's a, he's a bit of a cult hero, to be honest, uh, especially to female viewers of football. Carbon22 says individual disposal counts. I think that's probably, yeah, a good call by you, Cardi. It is one that gets bandied around a bit. And to be honest, I've done it myself in this exact video. But I think the more discerning football analysts, certainly in your, your analytical footy shows, they overlook those stats like on the couch. Nobody cares about disposals per game. They look at the hard-hitting stats like, you know, score involvements, meters gained. So I agree it's, it's probably overrated but I think we've gotten better at you know picking apart our game than that. Jackson Gilbert nominates Matthew Kennedy yes a player that I think was out of Carlton's side and finished in that side uh, contributing quite well every week so one of those things that Carlton fans appreciate how good he is no one else has quite seen it yet so I agree probably underrated. Guy everyone likes says Brody Grundy rated about right. I think he's an absolute star uh, who hasn't quite recaptured that form and I think the media sort of hype has reflected that. Hugo Devine or Hugo Devine says Jack Henry is underrated. Yeah, that's probably fair. I think he's a bit of a gun. Um, but again, I think the media really acknowledges it. So probably slightly closer to the underrated. Riley Seath says Cody Waitman. I think Cody Waitman's lost a few fans this particular week after, uh, you know, playing for free kicks or whatever. So, but I, I don't think he's overrated on talent. I think he's a gun. I think, I think he's rated about right. Essendon Forever says Zach Merritt. I think rated about right. I don't think he's overrated. I think he's been a very consistent A-grade midfielder. And I don't think he's underrated because I see him as just outside that mix of your absolute best midfielders in the comp. That's reflected by not making All-Australian this year. But he, he is the sort of player that you would justifiably offer a big contract if he was free agent which uh, I believe has has been the case. Brody Lawrence says Taron Thomas, probably a little underrated. Again, one of those young players where his, his fans know how good he is and the rest of the league is starting to maybe open their eyes a little bit to it. But um, yeah, if he hits his potential, he's going to be unreal. But there's a fair bit of water to go under the bridge. Sam Manu says night grand final. Uh, pfft overrated a little bit. I thought, you know, the 2020 grand final was a pretty good spectacle, um, but I love a day grand final. So don't really have any logic for it. I just prefer a day grand final. Let's keep it in the day. Last but not least, we've got Falcon WT nominating Jack Redden as an underrated player. I would probably agree with that. I, don't, I wouldn't go out and say he's an A grade mid or anything like that. But uh, when you look at that Eagles midfield on you know, the potential and the star talent. He's actually been one of the most consistent best players and could, uh, you know, justifiably be top three in the best and fairest, best and fairest, best and fairest, top three in the best and fairest potentially. So yeah, I think he's actually a pretty good little player and one that I'd imagine not many fans around the league would uh, have any idea how good he is. All right, guys, that is it. That is all we have for AFL underrated or overrated. Let me know in the comments what you uh, think of my calls there. Um, what would you have said differently? We'll probably continue this series going. It's not really one that you could ever really run out of content. So uh, happy to keep that going if you guys respond to it. I thought it was a bit of fun. Anyway, guys, appreciate all the support. I hope you're doing well. Let's enjoy this final series and uh, let's not take for granted the fact that, you know, we've only got a few more weeks of football left in this season. So can't wait. Tune in just about every week for True Footy Live. Not sure if I can do the semis this week, but uh, we'll certainly be there for grand final day and hopefully the prelims as well. So take it easy guys. I'll see you in the next video.